there are two things in this world that I am extremely passionate about, it's Lana Del Rey and books. If you like both, you'll love this video and you're my type of person. Leave a comment with your favorite song, with your favorite book. If you like either or, you'll still like this video. And if you don't like either, I'm recommending to y'all as well as books that I'm recommending to you all I'm gonna tell you the synopsis of each book the lyrics from the song they're related to the book and just comparing the book and the song so let's get started with the video the first song is how to disappear and the book that relates to the song is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo one of my favorite books of all time truly this book is fantastic y'all very heartbreaking though let me give y'all the synopsis first this book follows the glamorous life of evelyn hugo her rise to fame in hollywood it follows her whole life and all of the people that she has married which are seven people in the midst of her seven marriages she is in love with this woman that is during like the 1980s and Evelyn just struggling with making decisions she makes all the wrong decisions but she is telling this story in an interview format in a way because she hires this journalist whose name is Monique Grant and Monique and Evelyn end up having this really huge connection to each other the plot twist is real you guys I was shot and by the time that we got the plot twist I was ugly crying it's a fantastic book it's a fantastic book first look that relates to this book is when lana del rey says john met me down by the boulevard cried on his shoulder because life is hard hmm. to me in this book harry is john because that's who evelyn goes to that's who she can talk to and complain to and harry would completely understand it let it. harry is her shoulder to cry on all of the guys tell me lies but you don't you just crack another beer this one also relates to harry but the harry towards the end of the book after you know who died who's important to harry i don't want to say who it was that died because that is probably a big spoiler so i'm not gonna say it but read the whole book and then listen to the whole song yeah. yeah the last lyric that relates to this book to me is now it's been years since i left new york i've got a kid and two cats in the yard the california sun and the movie stars i watch the skies getting light as i write as i think about those years as i whisper in your ear if y'all know what goes on with celia and evelyn in this book yeah <laughs> i'm about to start crying yeah, that's the first song. That's the first book. Fantastic song. Fantastic book. Lana Del Rey does such a good job portraying emotions. I feel like I love her so much because of the way her songs are. Her songs can be really, really happy sometimes. And then other times, it's just this like peaceful, gut-wrenching sadness. And I can relate. Next book is uh, High on the Beach and Daisy Jones and the Six. Yeah! Yeah! This is another Taylor Jenkins Reid book. Both of these are written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book follows Daisy Jones and her joining or partnering with this band called The Six. Well, it mainly covers a lot about addiction and drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. That's why High on the Beach automatically connects to this book. There's actually a scene in this book where daisy is like watching the sunset or something somewhere and she is writing a new song called regret me if you once y'all read that scene listen to high on the beach and you're gonna see exactly what i'm talking about you're gonna know right off the bat what i'm talking about and if you already read the book you probably already know what i'm talking about but this one was absolutely fantastic too i did not cry during this one which i'm very sad about i'm gonna listen to the audiobook to see if i cried then because i was expecting some tears to come out on to the lyrics that relate to this book. She says, I know you don't understand. You could be a bad mother, but that don't make you a man. Now you're just another one of my problems because you got out of hand. We won't survive. We're sinking into the sand. First of all, let's talk about how much of a baddie Daisy is. That's why that lyric relates to her the most. Because her like demeanor and the way she acts, her personality. The lyric also relates to like her and 
Billy's relationship. Billy is like her twin flame that she meets in the book. Billy, nobody likes Billy. Or I can't say that. I don't like Billy. Cause Billy's attitude and stuff, I didn't I just didn't like it. He was very snobby to me. I, I don't know. But that was her twin flame. They acted a little bit similar, but Billy was just more ditzy. Next lyric is I'll do it on my own. Don't need your money to give me what I want. Daisy grew up rich. So she um but her parents were like emotionally unavailable. But she wasn't in the music career for money because she already had it. Like that's why she did drugs and all this other thing because she didn't have that emotional support and care that she should have had. High by the beach and Daisy Jones and the Six they are hand in hand the pair cinnamon girl let's talk about it cinnamon girl relates to the wrath and the dawn duology i have book two which is the rose and the dagger first of all let's start off with the fact that i absolutely love this duology one of my favorites and one of my first fantasy romances that i've read um it's a retelling of the Ara arabic night or a thousand and one nights one of those and i think they're actually the same thing somebody tell me but this book follows shazzy is um volunteering to marry Khalid who kills his bride the, the next dawn um every time he marries and one of the brides that he killed was Shazi's best friend so obviously Shazi is trying to get revenge trying to get vengeance obviously she ends up falling in love with him so it's like an enemy to lovers also I would say that it is a slow burn it's, it's a quite a bit of a burn but she is uh keeping herself alive by telling him these stories and ending off the story each night on a cliffhanger sounds like something I would do absolutely fantastic book and I related it to Cinnamon Girl one of my favorite songs by Lana Del Rey every time I listen to that song I just go stand by the window <laughs> so dramatic yeah, yeah this song relates to both shazi and khalid to me because uh, parts of it i would feel like shazi would say and then parts of it i feel like khalid would say this part i feel like shazi would say and it says all the pills that you did violet blue green red to keep me at arm's length don't work you try to push me out but i find my way back in violet blue green red to keep me out i win if you have read the book you know where this certain moment where shazi is alive and she obviously is starting to realize that there's more going on behind the scene than khalid is saying as to why he's having to kill his brides like he's not choosing to and you'll see in this book i believe it is when like the curse is revealed so he's actually cursed as to why he have to kill a bride each dawn uh, this is from khalid's point of view there's things i want to say to you but i'll just let you live like if you hold me without hurting me you'll be the first who ever did stop stop when i realized like the connection between these two books and cinnamon girl i um, mm, mm, mm. i was having a rough time last night coming up with this list yeah i was literally in tears the party keeps in completely forgot to mention the fact that there's a sign in the song where she's like kerosene in my hand you make me mad on fire again that one definitely relates to shazi's attitude like when shazi gets mad she rages and I feel like that's what that line was saying in the song. Cinnamon Girl and The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger definitely go hand in hand. Also, the aesthetic of this book is like the Arabic culture. Like, I don't know. I am obsessed with this book. One of the most vivid books that I've ever read. I loved it so much. There's also a webtoon comic on this book. So if you don't want to read the physical copy of the first book and you just want to read like a comic or a graphic novel format of the book, you have to download webtoon on your phone the comic was actually how i started reading the book i read the comic first and then i read the two books and ended up being one of my favorites of all time the next song is happiness is a butterfly and the book i related it to was book lovers by emily henry one of my most recent reads absolutely fantastic i cannot wait till i get my own copy of this book and i'm able to highlight and underline all of my favorite quotes this book follows nora steffens and charlie lost lastra nora and charlie both work in like the publishing field but the book mainly follows nora who is looked at as this emotionless workaholic 
and her sister takes her on this trip to this uh place called sunshine falls north carolina and there's a um whole reason why her sister is bringing her there but you only get that at the end of the book and um she's going on this trip there to like stop working for a little bit and take a break she keeps running into charlie lostra and they only met this one time while they had this meeting and it was a really bad meeting both of them were having a bad day and they kept jabbing at each other and they just, ever since then they just didn't like each other and then um they start connecting more obviously it's like a nemesis to lover best thing ever it's the best thing ever one of my favorite emily henry reads actually the favorite emily henry read i love emily henry she is my queen um i love her so much definitely recommend this book especially if you're looking for a book to travel with and you have like a summer bucket list and all of that type of thing going on the first lyric that relates to this book is the bar was hot it's 2 a.m it feels like summer the book takes place in summer it's a trip there's a little bar there it's a really really cute small town romance every day is a lullaby it hums on my phone like every night when Nora is in this small town she's at homesick because she loves the city and she plays city sounds on her phone to help her go to sleep so that's why I chose that lyric where it says it hums from my phone like every night okay the most depressing lyric of this whole song if he's a serial killer then what's the worst that can happen to a girl that's already hurt? I'm already hurt. If y'all read the book and y'all like see Nora's inner monologue, very depressing. I almost started crying a bunch of times. I also vlogged me reading this book. So uh, if you have already read the book and you want to see my reactions and everything on this book itself, definitely go check out that vlog <laughs> and comment y'all thoughts on the book. If he's as bad as they say, then I guess I'm cursed. Looking into his eyes, I think he's already hurt. Towards the end, when you see uh, Nora and Charlie start to talk more about their own feelings about each other. <laughs> The last line that relates to this book it says i just want to hold you tight down the avenue i just want to dance with you read this whole book and listen to the whole song for all of these books if y'all read these books listen to the song i swear i swear i'm not crazy next song is mariner's apartment complex and i related it to get a life chloe brown this book follows Chloe Brown, who is a website developer and she has fibromyalgia. She lives in the flat where Redford is like the superintendent. Now Redford Morgan, he is coming out of this toxic relationship um, with this girl named Pippa. He is also an artist, but he is like not doing art anymore and there's a whole reason behind why he's not doing art and there's a whole backstory to him and he's learning how to trust people again and he does not like chloe brown and chloe brown does not like him obviously they end up liking each other a little bit more so by the way chloe is writing a list on how to get a life because she has this near-death experience her life flashes before her eyes and she's like wow that was extremely boring we gotta fix that girly she ends up creating this whole list of things that she needs to do to get a life and redford ends up being the one to help her accomplish this list in exchange she's making a website for him so that he can get his art back on the road and start selling his art and all of that i am going to read to y'all some of the lyrics that relate to this book i'm the boat the lightning the thunder kind of girl who makes you wonder who you are and who you've been that is most definitely miss chloe brown um redford really starts to have this reflection moment a lot of times throughout the book um where he's thinking about his past relationship and he's thinking about himself and who he is now catch a wave and take in the sweetness think about it the darkness the deepness all the things that make me who i am once again that's absolutely miss chloe even in the darkness i feel your resistance you can see my heart burning in the distance <laughs> The next song is Love Song, and the next book is Hook, Line, and Sinker. Girly Pops, if you have read this book, go ahead and click off this video and listen to the song for me. This book follows Fox Thorn Thornton and Hannah Bellinger and their friends to lovers romance. Fox is like this playboy, but in real life, Fox was overly sexualized as a child and as an adult, so he really doesn't know what he's doing with his life and hannah is hannah is the first woman to ever ask him for a platonic relationship so he's like 
<laughs> what's that who's he he's somehow trying to figure out how to be a good friend because he's never been friends with a woman nobody ever wants fox for more than an hour she um moves to westport which is where he lives and where he works as a fisherman and stays in his apartment for a little while to film a movie or something about the town and whole time hannah has a crush on this guy named sergi who was like her film director and she works for him and fox is like starting to become more and more in love with her it is honestly so cute but this one isn't like the rom com -y, cheesy romances this one actually has a lot of depth about the like over sexualization of males and men miss tessa bailey i was like <laughs> Anywho, let's get on to the lyrics that relate to the book. I feel like this lyric relates to Fox. We go fast, we go so fast, we don't move. I believe in the place that you take me. Make make you real proud of your baby. Like, Fox is really trying so hard for her because he's just so unsure. He doesn't know what to do. Like, I can't even blame him either. Like, oh, be my once in a lifetime, lying on your chest in my party dress. I'm a mess but i i feel like that's from fox's point of view by the way the epilogue in this book top tier i've never seen anything done like it absolutely fantastic we're obsessed with the epilogue of this book if you haven't read this book and you loved the next book that i'm going to be talking about um do yourself a favor and p pick this book up so specifically the line being my once in a lifetime i feel like that's from fox's point of view when he gets to the i'm ready moment and he has that click <laughs> it's everything it's everything so this is another line that's from fox's point of view i feel like would you like to think that you would stick around you know that i just died to make you proud the taste the touch the way we love such a heartbreakingly beautiful book such a heartbreakingly beautiful song the last song that I'm going to be talking about is Doing Time, and the last book that I'm going to be recommending is It Happened One Summer. If you want to start somewhere, you want to get in listening to Lana Del Rey, definitely listen to Doing Time and read It Happened One Summer. This is another book that is extremely good for the summer and to travel with. This is a small town romance that takes place between Piper Bellinger and Brendan Tar Taggart. This is a duology, by the way. Both of these books are from the Bellinger sisters. So yes, it's a small town romance. Piper is moving to Westport from LA. She is a model, blonde, party girl, and she's extremely rich. So she grew up with the Silver Spoon. Brandon is actually the captain of the uh, fishing crew. And he is um, still wearing his wedding ring for his wife that died seven years ago. So he's <laughs> Brandon's clicking moment everything as well like this book actually has a special place in my heart like every time i make spaghetti i start to think about this book there's a lot of cute rom-com scenes in this book where brandon is literally courting her he is wooing this girl like yeah! the cutest book ever i cannot recommend this book enough this song i feel like relates to more of piper's point of view so it says hey, me and louis we're gonna run to the party and dance to the rhythm it gets harder and then one of the lyrics of the song says show them how we come off the shelf so piper has this huge character development we love that she grows as a person and starts to actually be an adult and um learns how to live on her own because that's why she was sent to westport she was sent to westport for throwing this big party and having the police call her dad was like you gotta go bestie you gotta figure out how to live on your own you have got to grow up that is everything i have written down today girlies this may be a series on my channel depending on how much y'all like this video the other artists that i like are harry styles and adele i love adele if y'all want me to do a version where i do adele songs as book recommendations i got y'all i got y'all i love you all so much i will see y'all in my next video